The Double Slit Experiment and The Conscious Observer In 2012, I reviewed a double slit diffraction experiment. The experiment aimed to investigate the possible role of consciousness in the collapse of the quantum wave function. Following early speculations, mathematician John von Neumann introduced the idea in the 1930s that human consciousness and physical reality are somehow directly interconnected. Von Neumann proposed that the photon wave function could collapse at any point in the causal chain, from the double slit to the human observer who performs the measurement. Eugene Wigner, theoretical physicist, 1963 Nobel laureate in physics, described the same problem in the 1960s, yet in more explicit terms. He proposed that it is indeed human consciousness observing the measurement of the photon state that collapses its wave function. Wigner realized, when he was over 70, that his early idea that consciousness collapses the wave function was not correct. In 2011, scientists Shan Yu from the Max Planck Institute for Brain Research in Frankfurt and Danko Nikolic from the Frankfurt Institute for Advanced Studies arrived at the same conclusion, from existing empirical evidence. Their conclusion, is summarized in the title of their publication. Quantum Mechanics, Needs, No Consciousness. U. and Nikolic's 2011 paper was published, in one of the oldest scientific journals of physics, Honolender Physik, Berlin. While preparing their paper for publication, Yu and Nikolic discussed their results with notable scientists of quantum theory and philosophy. Anton Chilinger Marcus Arndt Thomas Metzinger Rajarshi Roy Nick Herbert Several publications followed aiming to refute the results of the U and Nikolic 2011 paper. None of them appeared in the same journal, Han Allender Physik. None of them was either authored, or endorsed by notable quantum theory experts. Sir Roger Penrose, 2020 Nobel laureate in physics, mathematical physicist, philosopher of science, professor of mathematics at the University of Oxford, describes his view on the role of consciousness in physical reality. It agrees with the scientific conclusions on the matter, by you and Nikolic. During an interview with clinical psychologist Dr. Jordan Peterson in 2022, Professor Penrose stated, Consciousness does not collapse the wave function. Gravitational interaction, is somehow involved in this process. A year after the you and Nikolic paper, Evidence that human consciousness had collapsed the photon wave function was published. Observed in the double slit experiment, whose experimental part I have reviewed. A tutorial on the double slit diffraction experiment, follows. Adapted to the experimental setup that I reviewed in 2012 and further extended. The 2012 double slit experiment investigated possible collapse of the photon wave function as evidenced by monitoring the fringe visibility, V, that is, the contrast between bright and dark diffraction fringes in the double slit diffraction pattern. If the contrast between fringes decreased, even slightly, by the participation of human observers during the experiment, then the photon wave function had partially collapsed. To observe such changes in the fringe visibility, V. The double slit diffraction pattern was converted by fast Fourier transform to a power spectrum. The two reported graphs, the double slit diffraction pattern, and the power spectrum, should agree on the information they provide, and be consistent with the reported experimental parameters. The wavelength of the diffracted light, lambda, 
the width of each slit, a. The distance between slits, small d. The distance, capital D, of double slit from the camera. The width of the camera pixel, p. The accuracy of the experiment is tested by the following questions. Does the reported spacing between fringes, small delta, agree with the reported experimental setup data, according to diffraction theory? Does the number of bright fringes, n, inside the central diffraction band, agree with the reported experimental setup data, according to diffraction theory? Was the reported power spectrum, accurately derived from the reported double slit diffraction pattern, according to diffraction theory and experimental data? The answer to all the above questions for the experiment that I reviewed in 2012 is No. The double slit consists of an opaque screen with two narrow slits, each of width, small a, positioned at a narrow distance, small d, from each other. When the laser beam passes through the double slit, it bends, and spreads around the slit edges. Recombining in space, into an array of bright and dark fringes. The double slit diffraction pattern, which is projected on a screen, positioned at distance, capital D, from the double slit. The laser in this experiment, is a helium neon gas laser, of wavelength lambda approximately equal to 633 nanometers. According to the reported specifications, its beam operates on three different modes. If accuracy is required in the experiment, the diffracted light intensity pattern, is registered by a sensitive digital camera. The photos show the front, A, and the rear, B, view of the camera used to register the double slit diffracted light, in the experiment that I reviewed, in 2012. The camera window in this experiment, registers the intensity of diffracted light, by 3000 pixels in a line. The width of each pixel, p, equals 7 micrometers, and its height, equals 200 micrometers. The experiment whose settings I reviewed in 2012 had reported an inaccurate pixel height 0.2 micrometers, 1000 times smaller than its actual size. To exemplify how the order of missing fringe, M, and the number of central bright fringes, N, relate to the fixed experimental parameters, small d and a, here are two examples, of double slit diffraction patterns, recorded with digital camera. First example. The blue dots are the measurements from each camera pixel. The red line, is the theoretical fit, on the camera measurements. The experimental parameters are, the slit width, A equals 40 micrometers. The slit separation, small d, equals 500 micrometers. The order of missing fringe, M therefore is, m equals d divided by a, that is, 500 divided by 40, which is 12.5, or approximately equal to 13. The total number of fringes, n, inside the central band, will be, n equals 2 times m minus 1, that is, equals to 25. You may wish to pause the video at this point to count the 25 fringes, between the two missing fringes, of order 13. Here is a second example. The experimental parameters are. Slit width, A equals 0.04 mm. Slit separation, D equals 0.25 mm. The order of missing fringe in this example is. M equals D divided by A, equal to 6.25, that is approximately equal to 6. Finally, the number of fringes inside the central band will be, 
n equals 2 times m minus 1 equal to 11. Let us now repeat the same procedure, this time on the reported double slit diffraction data that I reviewed in 2012. The reported experimental parameters are distance between slits, d equals 200 micrometers, width of each slit, a equals 10 micrometers. The order of the missing fringe, m, is m equals d divided by a equals 20. The expected number of fringes inside the central diffraction band will be n equals 2 times m minus 1 equals exactly to 39 fringes. I have created a simulation of the 2012 double slit diffraction pattern based on the reported experimental data. Here is half of the simulated central band to better display the diffraction fringes and the spacing between fringes, delta. The simulation reproduces accurately the expected missing order fringe, m equals 20. It also reproduces accurately the number of fringes inside the central band, n equals 39. Let us now specify a the order of missing fringe, b, the number of fringes, c, the fringe spacing, this time on the reported double slit diffraction pattern. There are no records, from the camera pixels, displayed on the graph. There is no fitting of the theoretical curve, on the currently invisible camera pixel records. The thick line representing the double slit diffraction intensity, appears uneven and considerably flattened at the two ends. Beyond fringe of order 16, there are extended lengths of apparently zero-intensity diffracted light, appearing as similar, weak-intensity ripples. These may result, from an angle of the double-slit slide to the vertical, or from the presence of contamination on the camera pixels. The poor representation of the intensity distribution, beyond fringe 16, does not allow for an accurate assignment of higher fringe orders, on the reported diffraction pattern. Alternatively, we can estimate the location of the two missing fringes of order 20, based on experimental data. First, we graphically estimate the spacing between fringes, delta, on the reported double slit diffraction pattern. The graphically estimated average spacing, delta, on the reported diffraction pattern, is 67.8 pixels. Standard error of the mean equal to 0.4 pixels. This double slit experiment had reported that the fringe spacing was 69 pixels. The graphically estimated fringe spacing, equal to 67.8 pixels, is not in agreement with the reported fringe spacing, 69 pixels. Could such a small discrepancy between the reported and graphically estimated values of delta, affect the outcome of this experiment? We can use delta, to either estimate or check through it, other reported experimental parameters. As for instance the distance d between the double slit and camera. In diffraction theory, the parameters distance slit to camera, and fringe spacing, are related. Their relationship is displayed below. Lambda is the wavelength of the laser beam, and small d is the distance between slits. We shall need the width of one pixel, p, to convert pixels into meters and vice versa. We finally estimate the distance of the double slit to camera, d, for delta equals 67.8 pixels to b, 15 centimeters. The reported distance of the double slit to camera, d, was 10.4 centimeters. This is another disagreement, between reported, and estimated experimental parameters. 
Here is a table of double slit to camera distances, D, and the estimated diffraction fringe spacings, according to theory. A, is the reported double slit to camera distance. B, is its alternative in case of a possible typo. C, is the actual distance that results from the reported double slit diffraction pattern. None of the reported or alternatively reported distances, capital D, agree with the reported fringe spacing, delta equals 69 pixels. We conclude that the actual distance between the double slit and the camera, is the graphically estimated D equals 15 centimeters. How can we tell, if the photon path was observed, and the wave function collapsed, during the experiment? If the photon path through one slit is fully observed by the participant, then single slit diffraction will be registered on the screen, and the dark fringes in the central band will be washed out. If the photon path is not observed by the participant, then diffraction occurs through both slits, and the contrast between fringes is at maximum. Intermediate values of the fringe contrast are possible. Let us now estimate the contrast between fringes through the fringe visibility parameter, V. Diffraction theory allows us to estimate the fringe visibility parameter, V, directly on the double slit diffraction pattern, and also on the associated fast Fourier transform power spectrum. If the fast Fourier transform was correctly derived from the double slit diffraction pattern, the two estimates of the fringe visibility, V, should agree. The fringe visibility parameter, V, is defined as I max is the intensity at the center of the bright fringe. I min is the intensity at the center of the dark fringe. Here are two examples, where V is graphically estimated, from their corresponding double slit diffraction patterns. You may pause the video to follow those simple calculations. We estimate first the fringe visibility, V, on the reported double slit diffraction pattern. Working out a detailed estimate of fringe visibility, V, for fringe of order 1 on the right. A simple calculation, based on the available intensity values on the diffraction pattern, yields that the fringe visibility is 0.60. We can also work out the average fringe visibility over 10 consecutive central fringes on the reported diffraction pattern. It is 0.59, standard error of the mean, 0.02. The fringe visibility parameter, V, in the 2012 experiment that I reviewed, was estimated not from the double slit diffraction pattern, but from the fast Fourier transform power spectrum derived from it. To exemplify how the power spectrum is derived from the double slit diffraction pattern, I first apply such derivation on my simulation of this experiment. My simulation of the 2012 double slit diffraction pattern and its fast Fourier transform power spectrum. The computer reads the digitized intensity of the diffraction pattern from the camera and recognizes the undulation due to the fringe spacing, delta. The fringe spacing in this example is, delta equals 0.0157 rad. On the fast Fourier transform power spectrum a peak appears at frequency the inverse of delta. Which is, 63.6 Hz. As explained in the appendix of my 2012 review article, the square of the fringe visibility, V, is the ratio, R, of the power at two different frequencies. The power at the peak, K, P of K, over the power at the unit of frequencies, P of 1. For this example, the measure, R, equals 0.51. And the fringe visibility, V, will be equal to 0.71.
we can now estimate the fringe visibility, on the reported fast Fourier transform power spectrum, associated with the double slit diffraction pattern. Here are the two graphs. A, the reported double slit diffraction pattern, and, B, the reported double slit fast Fourier transform power spectrum derived from it. The frequency in the power spectrum is expressed in wave numbers. The conversion of pixels into wave numbers, is based on the characteristics of the camera used. One wave number is chosen to be related to the camera width. One wave number, will therefore be, the inverse of the breadth of the camera window, 1 over 3000 pixels. He estimated fringe spacing, delta equals 67.8 pixels. It corresponds to power spectrum frequency, f of k equals 1 over 67.8 pixels to the minus 1. Converted to wave numbers, f of k will be 3000, divided by 67.8. It equals to approximately 44 wave numbers, with 0.3 estimated error. On the basis of data from the double slit diffraction pattern, the estimated fast Fourier transform peak frequency is, f of k equals 44 wave numbers. Yet, the power spectrum frequency of the peak reported, was f of k equals 45 wave numbers. There is a tiny, yet distinct disagreement, between the two power spectrum frequencies, the reported, and the one estimated on the basis of other reported data. This intriguing disagreement asks for further investigation. A careful examination of the reported power spectrum, reveals a small detail. The whole power spectrum had been shifted to the right, towards higher frequencies by one wave number. Bringing the peak frequency to 45, from its expected position at 44 wave numbers. How is such small frequency shift, affecting the estimation of the visibility parameter, V, and therefore of the measure R that will decide if the wave function had collapsed? Let us shift the power spectrum by one wave number, to where it is supposed to be, to find out. At the reported position of the power spectrum, the power at one wave number is very high, 10 to the power or 9 while the power at the peak is 10 to the power of 7.4. The measure, R, becomes 0.025 and the fringe visibility, approximately 0.16. At the new position of the power spectrum, red line, the intensity of the peak will not change. It will still be 10 to the power of 7.4. But, the power at one wave number, will decrease drastically due to the steepness of the power spectrum at that point. From the 10 to the power of 9 that was before, it will now become 10 to the power of 7.84. The measure, R, will increase to 0.363, and the fringe visibility will increase to approximately, 0.60. But, wait. This is the same value of fringe visibility estimated from the double slit diffraction pattern from which this power spectrum was derived. It must represent the correct value of fringe visibility. And this is the correct position of the power spectrum confirmed by the reported experimental data. With the help of the double slit diffraction theory, one can estimate where the power spectrum peak would be positioned if the alternative values of distance between the double slit and the camera were correct. As for instance, if the double slit to camera distance were 10.4 cm, then the power peak, would be positioned at 63.8 wave numbers. Or, if the double slit to camera distance were the alternative of a possible typo, 14 cm, then the power peak would be positioned at 47.4 wave numbers. While the correct distance, between the double slit and the camera, as confirmed by the experimental parameters and the reported graphs is, 
15 cm. Shifting the power spectrum by an invisible, tiny, one-wave number, the fringe visibility decreased from 0.60 to 0.16. Decrease in the fringe visibility signals the collapse of the wave function. In this case, the decrease, from 0.60 to 0.16, was by 73%. Let us ponder on the idea. We observe that the spectral power at one wave number increases linearly, by introducing tiny shifts of the graph to the right. The linear dependence, of power at one wave number, with tiny positive shifts of frequency to the right, is shown here. The table shows a selection of tiny frequency shifts of the power spectrum from its proper position to the right, that generates a whole range of decreased values of fringe visibility. If the power spectrum is shifted to higher frequencies, by an invisible half of a wave number, then the measure, R, has decreased by 74%. A clear, and yet artificially generated evidence for the collapse of the photon wave function. The artificially generated relative decrease of the measure, R, with deliberate tiny, invisible, positive frequency shifts of the power spectrum, follows the exponential decay curve, whose equation is shown in this graph. Selecting frequency shifts along this curve, will provide adequate artificial evidence, for the relative decrease of measure R, suggesting that the conscious observer, has collapsed the photon wave function, in the double slit diffraction experiment. The evidence becomes stronger, as one moves from the top to lower points along this curve. And this is how, concrete evidence, for the collapse of the photon wave function, may be artificially produced. This was a tutorial, on the physics and mathematics of the double slit diffraction, presenting an extended version of my 2012 review of the related experiment, that had shown positive evidence for the collapse of the photon wave function, by conscious observers. Here are summarized its main points. The distance between the double slit and the camera is neither 10.4 cm as reported, nor 14 as claimed, but 15 cm. The reported camera pixel height was not 0.2 but 200 micrometers. The spacing between fringes on the reported double slit diffraction pattern is not 69 pixels, but 67.8 pixels, standard error 0.4 pixels. The main peak of the reported power spectrum is not located at 45, but at 44 wave numbers. The fast Fourier transform power spectrum was falsely reported at a shifted by one wave number position, to display its main peak at 45, rather than the correct at 44 wave numbers. The reported power spectrum provides an artificially decreased measure, R, which could falsely signal the collapse of the photon wave function. As explained in my review paper, if a physical device attempted to observe the photon path, to induce the collapse of its wave function, it would not succeed it, because the laser in this experiment did not emit single photons, and even more so because these photons were entangled in more than one modes of operation.